When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NerdWallet finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. There is nothing I love more than an amazing meal with high quality meat cooked at home because let's be honest, eating out is so expensive. And you also know that eating out is the number one budget buster. That is why I am so glad I found ButcherBox. ButcherBox is a premium meat subscription service dedicated to delivering high quality, grass-fed and grass-finished beef, organic chicken, pork raised crate free, and wild caught seafood directly to your doorstep with free shipping always. You even get exclusive member deals, recipes, and a variety of high quality cuts at an amazing price. New users will receive their choice of two pounds of ground beef, three pounds of chicken thighs, or one pound of premium steak tips for a year. Use code ETM and get $20 off your first box at ButcherBox.com. Last night, we made a beef stew with meat from ButcherBox, and you can taste the difference. It was so satisfying and delicious, and all of our friends that were over for a dinner party, they raved at how good it was. So do yourself a favor and eat better this year with the best meat and seafood on the planet delivered to your door. ButcherBox is offering my listeners their choice of a weeknight meal essential, three pounds of chicken thighs, two pounds of ground beef, or one pound of premium steak tips for free in every order for a year. Plus, get $20 off your first order. Sign up today at butcherbox.com slash etm and use code ETM to choose your free offer and get $20 off. Did you know that 300 million people around the world have depression and anxiety, according to the World Health Organization? And it's estimated that 15% of the adult population will experience depression at some point in their lifetime. I'm one of them, and this is my journey. You're listening to Millennial Money with award-winning money expert and serial entrepreneur, Shauna Come to Game, where we flip the script on the old school approach to everything your parents never taught you about money. Each week, Shauna creates a safe space by talking with special guests from around the world about money wellness, entrepreneurship, traveling like a boss, and what makes millennials tick. Unique stories, trailblazing perspectives, tips, tricks, and everything there is to know about money. Find it all here as you uncover your money story and unlock the life you want to live. Pretty cool, right? Here's Shauna, money expert, Indiana Hoosier, and burger aficionado. Hi, this is Elton John here. Together with the Alliance for Lifetime Income, I'm spreading the word about the importance of protected income, which is money you're guaranteed to get. Protected income from an annuity helps ensure you have all your bases covered so you can have the financial freedom to tick off your bucket list. Meet with your financial advisor to ask if you have protected income and get their help making a plan that fits your unique financial goals. Go to protectedincome.org today. This episode is a reboot from a few years ago, but a very personal episode that I wanted to share with you again, certainly in the light of the environment we're in in 2020 and a really tough year. My hope is that if I can be honest about money and life struggles. You can get the courage to do the same in your life. And I just want you to know that you have a friend in me rooting for you. So here is my episode again about my struggles with anxiety and depression and the role that played in my money. I've talked on this podcast about going through anxiety and depression, but I wanted to share with you more about my journey the steps I took to feel better, and the role that all played in my finances. This episode has been on my mind for quite some time, but honestly, it took a little bit of a courage to be able to 
put my ideas and thoughts together succinctly and also to be able to talk to you just openly and honestly. So hopefully there won't be any tears shed in this episode, but I can't guarantee that. But maybe you can relate. Maybe you're somewhere on this journey yourself, or maybe you know someone who is. And I think the best we can do is just have this open and honest conversation about it. And hopefully we can begin also to remove the stigma because it is really okay to not be okay. And I know that sounds so cliche, but I just think that's the most important thing that I've learned because growing up, I I didn't know that lesson. I really thought you had to be perfect and that you had to be, for me, being a girl, you had to embody everything that it meant to be a girl. You had to let boys win, which is crazy that I knew that lesson really early on or that I learned that lesson because nobody implicitly taught me that. I just sort of felt like that was what I was supposed to do. I I excelled in sports even when I was really, really young. And we would have these things called field days and we would be broken up into teams and we'd have to wear these different colors for whatever your team was. And then we would all day long compete in sports as a team, but there was always an individual winner. And I was a little, tiny, little, petite, blonde-headed girl, but I was pretty darn tough. And there was no way that I was going to let a boy win a tug of war or climbing rope or certainly not running. I was such a good sprinter. And so (laughs) I somehow got the message that I was supposed to pull back and I was supposed to let the boys win. And so it wasn't until later on a teacher told me, you know, it's okay that you can win if you're strong and you're good. So anyway, I just thought that was super, super interesting. But I just thought I have to be perfect. There can't be anything wrong with me. I can't be anxious and I certainly can't not be okay. And I think if anything, that again is the biggest lesson that I've learned. And hopefully if you're in this situation or you know someone who is, maybe that's something you can really take to heart too. Because whether it's our money or our health or our mindset or whatever it is, we don't like to not be okay. And sometimes it's just really, really healthy to say, hey, I'm not okay. Hey, I need help. Hey, I don't know what I'm doing. (laughs) Can you help me? So I don't know about you, but there are so many different stresses in life. These are some of the things that really have totally stressed me out for years and years, certainly since I graduated from college. The idea of who am I? What are my talents? And what am I supposed to do with those talents? I think I know, but it's certainly not a linear path. And so it's, it can get really confusing and really stressful. Have I made good money decisions or will I struggle later on? I think that's maybe a universal thought that we all think about. Maybe that's why you're listening to this podcast. It's certainly why I do this podcast because I'm on the journey too. Have I missed opportunities in life? I mean, this is a big one for me. There's so many times I can think about, well, what if I would have taken a left turn instead of a right turn? Or what if I had taken advantage of this opportunity and not something else? But I've just learned to come to peace around I am exactly where I'm supposed to be. Even if it feels a little messy, a little sloppy, it is exactly where I'm supposed to be. And so I have to just keep pressing forward each day. And then the last one is just, it's such a self-conscious thing. Am I pretty enough? Am I smart enough? Etc. I think about those things all the time, anytime I'm doing an interview or I'm out on a camera assignment or gosh, anything that I do, I'm always thinking, why am I here? Am I smart enough? Am I pretty enough? Am I worthy enough to be here? And those are really terrible questions because are any of us really those things? I mean, we all bring such unique talents and skills to everything we do, and we can constantly be questioning ourselves. And so I've really learned to try to stop doing that and just appreciate that whatever opportunity I'm in, it's where I'm supposed to be. And all I can do is just show up and be me and just talk open and honestly about whatever the subject is. 
so can you relate to any of those? I mean, there's probably a million more things if I'm going to be honest with you, but if I had to boil it down, those are really the top things that just, it's like constantly revolving around in my head and I have to focus on turning off the noise at time. So my journey with anxiety and depression, it has come and gone over the years, but it was really unrelenting for about three years straight, which is a really long time for me. It may not seem like a long time for you, but for me, it was really, really hard. All while I was having to do work every day, perform, talk intelligently, teach others, pay bills, be a good partner, take care of my body, you name it. I'm just, I'm tired of even thinking about all of that because it was a lot to hold up when I was in the midst of this. And so I want to just share with you what was going on with me. And and this is just maybe to, to help you feel okay about talking about things because, again, I feel like we need to just be able to have healthy discussions about this. And I, I had anxiety for years, but I didn't recognize it. I didn't know the name of it. <laughs> and I think we all have anxiety at some point. There's probably things that you do that you get really anxious about or that make your heart speed up. And we all have those situations. I can remember a couple instances in particular when I was a kid, we were on this trip to the East Coast and we were somewhere in Maine or New Hampshire. I can't remember. And we were driving around this lake trying to find the house that we were going to go stay at. And this was way before we had cell phones and modern day GPS. We were using old maps and gosh, you name it. And my dad was driving. It was my family in the car. And we were just going around and around and around in a circle. And I remember getting so incredibly anxious with that feeling of we're lost. Oh my God, we're lost. We don't know where we're going. We're not going to find the place. And I just worked myself up into like the biggest panic situation. And I I was like, what is this? I don't, I don't recognize this. And then later in life in my twenties, it manifested into flying. Every time I would step on a plane, I would get so incredibly nervous and it just came out of nowhere. I never had a problem flying. I flew through college and, and, you know, high school and growing up as a kid, never had a problem. In fact, I loved being up in the clouds. And then all of a sudden I just started to get so unbelievably scared. And I would get so scared that yes, of course, my hands would get clammy, my heart would race, I'd have to go to the bathroom very frequently. And I just couldn't concentrate on anything other than get me to where I need to be because I can't handle this. And still to this day, I have trouble. I really have to calm myself down when there's turbulence or when I'm just feeling uncomfortable. It's it's really hard for me, but I'm learning that it's all just a manifestation of anxiety. It just happens to come out like that when I'm flying, unfortunately. And the thing is, is it doesn't stop me from flying. I push myself to get on the plane and I tell myself, you are just fine. You're going to get up in the air. It's going to be an amazing experience and you're going to land in some really cool place and life's going to go on. (laughs) And I guess it's sort of a metaphor for life for me that things can be bumpy and feel out of control. And those are the times when you need to just relax into it. So I try to find somebody on the plane that is really relaxing, particularly when there is turbulence, and just focus on them and focus how peaceful they look and try to bring that into my body. It's not easy. I'm I'm not going to lie to you, but it is certainly a, a work in progress. And for me, really the combo, the duo combo of depression and anxiety showed up after a miscarriage that I had of twins at at 10 weeks, and that was about four years ago. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news 
Well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps. But I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. Gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built-in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial. Millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. Everyone knows that putting money aside in savings is really important. But then what? Should you keep your savings locked in a CD for a higher rate or keep them liquid in a money market? Can your checking account help you save too? Or is it about creating the right combination? We believe real banking is a conversation. Let's talk about the savings options that are right for you. Learn more at sandyspringbank.com. Member FDIC. In case you didn't know, 2020 has been a little bit of a rough year. Maybe it's been a rough year for you or your loved one, a family member, a friend, no matter what it might be. I want you to know that it's okay. If if you are somebody who 2020 was just like a thriving good year for you, that's fantastic. But for most of us, it's not quite that way. So if you were laid off, if you were furloughed, if you're struggling, I just want you to know that it's okay. It's all going to be okay. And it might not feel like it right now. But if I've learned anything in this life, it's that nothing stays the same for a long period of time. You're never always in debt. You're never always struggling. You're never always feeling terrible about your money situation or your career or where you live or a relationship. It's just not always for a long period of time. Sometimes it feels like it, but it really isn't. And I want to encourage you to reach out to people. They do genuinely want to help you. If you are somebody who lost your job or who got furloughed or who is stressed out or feeling overwhelmed, reach out to someone. I realize right now we can't be physical contact with people, but there's still a lot of great people out there that really want to help you. And also, don't be afraid to take risks. I've taken a lot of risks this year, uh, and it feels scary, it feels shaky, it feels not comfortable, but risks are really the place where you start to learn and grow. Another thing I want to share that this, this episode is obviously all about my anxiety and depression, and I want to tell you from one person who suffers to another person, it doesn't last forever. If you can find, though, those moments of hope and peace and really just hold on to those. Those are what really helped me get through this this tough period that I went through. And it wasn't just a month. It was a really long few years. I still struggle over and over with this. 
you will pay off the debt. You will get a new job. You will go on a trip again. You will see other people again. You will have more money in your bank account. You will boost up your credit score. Whatever those things are for you, you will. They will happen. I promise you. And if you need help, please reach out to a therapist. There are so many health plans now that cover therapy. There are also low-cost options like the Talk Therapy app. If you can't afford therapy, reach out to a few therapists and say, hey, do you have any sorts of plans for someone like myself who lost a job this year but is really struggling? Again, ask the questions and look for little things. Like I use the Calm meditation app every day. It's just 10 minutes every morning and it really helps me manage anxiety. So don't stay stuck. This community needs you and I need you and we're all here for you. So let's try and do what we can with the rest of this year to reduce some stress, reduce some anxiety. And again, look for those little glimmer moments, those little moments where something with your money makes sense, where something goes right. Hang on to those because that's where the magic is. Hello, Saver. Whether you're saving for that trip to the tropics or saving for an emergency, now is the time to take advantage of Wells Fargo's savings options. Wells Fargo offers savings accounts that can help you save towards your goals. So what are you saving for? Visit a Wells Fargo branch or wellsfargo.com slash save to open a savings account today. Wells Fargo Bank N.A. Member FDIC. I've never been one of those people that really longed to have kids. I always thought I would have one or two, but I've been so career focused that it wasn't really, it wasn't really on my radar. It was something that I was going to do later, but it was such a dizzying time for me. I was told that I couldn't have kids and then all of a sudden I got pregnant. So it was like, what? And I I love being around kids. I'm an auntie to so many different kids. And so I love being around them. I think I have a real mothering nature. But after that experience, I just felt, in a word, the best word I can use to describe it to you is purposeless. Like I had no purpose. And coincidentally, it was right around the time that I started this podcast. So you can definitely find the irony in that. (laughs) And you know, I found that anxiety and depression can be triggered by an event, certainly. And then it it focuses you on all of the other things that you have not dealt with in your life. And so for me, it was a bucket full of stuff left over from being divorced, a bucket full of stuff left over from high school and not feeling like I fit in and all of that crap that comes along with those years. And so The miscarriage was just like the cherry on top, if you will. And it just caused the whole mountain (laughs) to come crashing down. And I've never experienced anything like it. I've never experienced times where I just wanted to stare at the wall. Honestly, I didn't want to do anything. I, I, I wanted to pack a bag and I wanted to run away and run away from everything in my life, which I know is is not the answer, but I didn't really know what else to do. And I'm a big believer in therapist. So in fact, if you don't know this, <laughs> my therapist and Jeff's therapist actually stood up for us in our wedding. They were our best man and maid of honor. So we definitely have a true belief in going to therapy, which is great because we came into the marriage with that sort of understanding. But last July, I knew this had to stop. And I went to my therapist who told me to go see this acupuncturist. She said, I want you to just trust me. I want you to go see this acupuncturist. And I really think that she is going to help you. And it was like magic. I really, it sounds crazy for me to share this with you because I had spent three years in such terrible mind shape that I went to see this acupuncturist on like a Thursday and she did a session. She talked to me for a really long time. She prescribed me some Chinese herbs 
And the next morning I woke up and I was like, oh my God, like, I, I feel like myself. I feel happy. I feel like I have a purpose. I feel excited. I feel, I mean, it was the craziest thing. I cannot describe to you. <laughs> I, I don't know. Some people have told me, oh, you just sort of manifested that in your mind. Like, yeah, okay. But to some point there was something that was also therapeutic to my body. So I cleared out my body. I took herbs, like I said. I uh, took away crap from my diet. I drank green, green juice almost every day. I begin to eat almost exclusively gluten-free. I did all of this stuff to support the other work that was being done through acupuncturist. And it was like, I felt like the best I'd ever felt in my life. I'm telling you, I don't know what it was. It was like a Pandora's box of excitement had been opened up and things were suddenly amazing. And I got stressed again in October over stupid stuff, as as we often tend to do. And of course, that week is when I had a flu shot. And then a few days later, became deaf in my left ear. So um, I had a few months of just feeling amazing. But I would tell you that I would take getting deaf in my left ear a million times over the depths of what I felt the years earlier. Just that feeling of insignificance, that feeling of I want to run away. That feeling of I can't handle anything, even good stuff. I'm like, I, it doesn't even penetrate my body. And so, you know, it, it really was such a tough and interesting time for me. And, and yet it revealed so many amazing things to me about the correlation between my mindset and my money. Hey, I know you work hard and you're taking time to get in a better relationship with your money. So I want to do you a favor. I want to buy five listeners a week a cup of coffee or tea just to say thank you. You can take what you would have spent and just put it towards one of your goals. I know it's a small amount, but every dollar counts, right? All you need to do is head to iTunes, leave a review for Millennial Money Podcast, and then email me a copy of your review to info at m moneypodcast.com. That's info at mmoneypodcast.com to be eligible to have a cup of coffee on me. And I wanted to share with you some thoughts and stats about treatment for depression. So this article says that depression is very treatable, but only half of all Americans who are treated with depression in a given year get treatment. Those who do seek treatment wait months or even years to get help. Many individuals with depression who seek treatment are under treatment, and studies consistently show a combination of talk therapy and medication can be most effective in treating depression. So here are some stats on depression treatment. Only one in five people receive treatment consistent with current practice guidelines. Six percent of people with depression are treated with medication only, and 37 percent of Americans with depression receive no treatment at all. So again, I thought, okay, but what does this all have to do with money? Well, actually a lot because there is an economic impact of depression. Depression takes an economic toll on individuals, families, organizations, and society as a whole. It can lead to reduced educational attainment, lower earning potential, and higher rates of unemployment. So here are some more stats that this study showed. Depression is the leading cause of disability worldwide. That's crazy. The leading cause. The total economic burden of depression is estimated to be $210.5 billion a year. 48 to 50% of the economic costs are attributed to absences from work as well as decreased productivity caused by depression. I believe that one. <laughs> 45 to 47% of the costs are due to medical expenses such as outpatient and inpatient treatment or the costs of medication. So all the ways that I use to feel better have been pricey and they too have been out of pocket. It hasn't been covered by my insurance or hasn't largely been covered by my insurance, which is a really important money lesson in itself 
that life can create its own curveballs and that it really goes to back up the reasoning behind having some sort of money that you can tap into when things like this come up and you just, you need to get better. You need to feel better. And I chose not to have depression medication, but that was my decision. I did other things to try and pull myself out of depression. So it might be something different for you, but my insurance only covers a small portion of acupuncture. But again, we carved out cash from our budget. We literally stopped going out to eat so we could buy healthy and we could cook healthy because I knew that there was a strong link between my health, what I was putting in my body, and what was happening in my brain. And so it was worth it to me to spend more money on good stuff to put in my body so that my brain could function better, so that I could go out and be more productive, I could handle my money better, I could be better in relationship, all of those sorts of things. And we already love to cook, but now there was this reason to do it, to keep my body and my mind healthy. So we went completely gluten-free. I took out all the things that cause inflammation in my body, like cheese, alcohol, dairy, wheat, so that my mind and my body could process better. Coincidentally, those are all the things that are also supposed to help my ear feel better. So it was kind of like a double whammy for me. And we committed to working out four days a week. We did a mix of yoga, weights, walking. And one of the biggest things that I did was I let myself off the hook. I don't have to be perfect. Even on this podcast, if I mess up or I flub up, it's totally cool and I own it. And that's just part of the process. And I also found people that I could talk to about this really openly and honestly. And for my money, I looked at things differently too. I, I created what we call a health slush fund. And we set aside more money than we put in our emergency fund in the slush fund for things like going to acupuncture, getting a massage, uh, all, all sorts of things. We've done so many different things and all of those things couldn't be uh, afforded without going into debt had we not made some changes with our budget. Also reorganized my goals and got super intentional about them. And I, I found that getting really intentional about my goals helped me stay super present and not be worried about tomorrow or the next day or God forbid, 10 years down the line. And so I focused really on doing one productive money thing a day, and I just left it at that. I didn't have to set up a whole new money system. I didn't have to make sweeping changes. I just needed to focus on one thing a day and then also walk away from the things that brought me more anxiety, the things that I could walk away from or knowing when anxiety was creeping in and saying, okay, I need to just give myself a moment. And so as my mind and body got better, my money did as well. Not overnight, but little by little by little, these little tiny steps. I really think whether that's money or that's depression or that's relationships, whatever it is for you, the day by day by day approach, just doing one thing every day to be proactive, it really is going to help you make sweeping changes in ways that you just can't even imagine. So as much as we listen to podcasts, read articles, download apps, all of these amazing things to help us solve money problems and money goals, we have to use mindfulness as well to build strong habits. And I believe that to find a new level of success, realizing that the goal is just one point in time, if we can calm our minds around money, we can really achieve success because we aren't tied to how much or how little we have in our bank accounts. And that was an important lesson for me as I was coming out of depression and anxiety is to not attach my worth or my value to whatever amount of money was in my bank account. Money can be made. Money can be lost. Those things are easy. Your health, your mindset, those things are what are really important because you can make more money. Trust me, you can. I came back after getting divorced from in the hole <laughs> and pulled myself out. So you can do it too. And I think really what I just want to leave you with is that depression and anxiety, it's a journey. 
there isn't an easy fix. Even if you're taking medication and you feel great now, I'm so happy for you, but there isn't an easy fix. And if you're on this journey or you know someone who is, it can get better. There's so much life to enjoy. But if anything, I just want you to know that I'm right there with you and I'm fighting with you each and every day. Every day I wake up, I have to positively tell myself that I can handle anything that comes my way and that I can make good choices if I just am staying present, I'm staying in the moment, and I'm doing that one proactive thing every single day. So thank you so much for just letting me share my story. I hope that maybe it might help you be able to talk to somebody else if you're struggling, no matter where you are in the journey. Just knowing that we're on it together, I think brings me hope, and hopefully it brings you hope as well. Hey, you. Yes, you. Before you go, we want to say thanks for listening to this episode of Millennial Money. For all the links, tags, and ads you've heard on today's episode, check out the show notes or go to mmoneypodcast.com, where you'll find more episodes to share with your friends. While you're at it, leave us a review and make sure to subscribe wherever you listen so you don't miss out on all the money tips and tricks that will take you from a millennial regular to a millennial money expert. See you back here in a few days with a fresh new episode.